This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. For 10% off your first purchase, use the discount code MacVoices11. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's been way too long since we talked to Ben Waldy of Automated Workflows, and this seemed like a very opportune time to get his thoughts on what's going on with Automator, Apple Script, and Mavericks. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this release and a lot of concern about the future of Apple Script, and who better than to talk to us about it than Ben? Ben, it's great to have you back on Mac Voices. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Chuck. It's great to be here. So, Ben, What's going on with Apple Script and Automator and all these things? There seem to be some dooms- doomsayers out there who feel like it all may be going away. There are a lot of kind of upset people who rely on some of this stuff to be productive. And I figure you have to be getting a lot of calls about this stuff. So what can you tell us about this? Um, yeah, so Apple has, well, they released Mavericks and um, anytime Apple has a new operating system release, there's always scripting changes and things like that. And you know, some scripts have to be updated to to work with the new operating system. They might change some Apple Script terminology, or some things might break. Um, in this case, they, uh, in addition to releasing Mavericks, did a simultaneous release of a new iWork version, and um, that new iWork version included three brand new versions of pages, keynote, and numbers. Um, and I think that's really where the most of the controversy is coming at the moment. Uh, there's been a lot of articles about this uh, online and a lot of buzz on Twitter uh, and things like that. But essentially, um, Apple rewrote pretty much from the ground up uh, pages, numbers, and keynote. And as part of that, they have almost eliminated the Apple script support in the apps. Um, none of the app, none of the none of those apps had a hugely significant Apple Script dictionary. Um, I wouldn't say they were the models of scripting or anything, uh, but they did allow you to do a pretty good amount of, of automation. Um, but with the new version, uh, they've really dramat- dramatically reduced the scripting support across the board in all the different apps. So Numbers, which had so, you know some things you could do in it before, has no Apple Script dictionary at all. Uh, pages has an Apple Script dictionary, but it only has one command essentially. So anybody who's got scripts for that, they're just, they're really not going to work. Um, and then Keynote does have some scripting commands, uh, but it has been reduced as well. So um, so you know naturally, anybody who's got scripts for the iWork apps, they are going to have you know they're not going to work. <laughs> so they're now going to be less productive uh, using their productivity apps from Apple. Um, and it's a real shame because. Uh, you know, it would be nice if Apple would set an example for other app developers by implementing strong Apple Script support in their apps. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't do that in this case. Um, I really think, uh, though, it boils down to not Apple, you know, killing off Apple Script as much as just choosing that to not be as high a priority in the feature set of these apps. Uh, like I mentioned, I think that Apple redeveloped these apps pretty much from the ground up. And I think the focus here was on user experience and that Apple really wanted to make a, a web version and a Mac version and an iOS version of these apps that all worked and, and acted pretty much the same and looked the same to users. Uh, there's a ton of other complaints out there besides just the Apple Script support for these apps. Um, I can tell you, you know, I... I had pretty much abandoned the Microsoft apps on my Mac and started using uh, Pages and Numbers for a lot of stuff. And Pages is, I'm finding, almost unusable in a lot of ways. Uh, it's just really things that were really easy and efficient to do before are just not efficient anymore. Um, and that's not even related to the Apple Script support. So I'm hoping that Apple you know, takes some of that into consideration for the next update, and, and we start seeing some efficiency improvements uh, as as updates come out. Ben, first of all, I'm kind of glad to hear this. Uh, that that as strange as that sounds, that these are the primary primary things affected. Because if you listen to some of the buzz on Twitter, you'd think that there's just a whole lot of stuff that is broken, and and Apple Script has gone by the wayside. And what I'm hearing from you is that's just not true. That there are plenty of apps that it, it the scripting capability remains. Is that correct? Yes. So in OS X, um, 
there's plenty of, in Mavericks, there's plenty of apps that still have plenty of AppleScript support. Um, with, like I said, with any operating system update, there's things that, that might break or change. Um, but there's also changes to the operating system in general that may be affecting some of those things. Um, so one thing that, uh, well, a couple things that may be affecting scripting support in apps are uh, Gatekeeper and Sandboxing, which are two security features in OS X. Um, essentially, sandboxing, the idea of sandboxing is that apps in the Mac App Store have to be sandboxed. And um, by sandbox, that means that they can't really talk to other apps. Um, and so that obviously sounds like it's not really going to work well with automation because when you automate things, you want apps to talk to one another. Um, but Apple has implemented some ways for apps to talk to one another so that scripts can still run with different apps and things like that. Um, and so that, you know, things are changing a little bit the way they work, but, but there's still support for these things in there. Um, a lot of Apple apps and tons of third-party apps still have plenty of AppleScript support. It just happens that the, that the iWork apps got their AppleScript support broken, which, which stinks, but you know, they're not the only apps in OS X. Um, and you know, there's, there, there are some other bugs and things that I've been finding um, or hearing about. Uh, but in general, I think that, that this is not too different than any operating system release that I've seen in the past where there's things that, that don't work. Um, and, you know, I've been filing out bug reports with Apple as I find things, and I, I'm sure other people have as well. So I guess, well, Ted Landau and I had a discussion about this, and one of his concerns or theories is that with the mobile devices driving things so so completely financially for, for Apple, uh, and, and there is no scripting on the iOS side, that Apple script may be a much lower priority. I mean, like a, a much lower priority. And I would be kind of surprised to, to see that or, or have, hear that because scripting seems to be so important to so many of the professional applications, Aperture, Final Cut, you know, right. all, all those things. So I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case. Do you have any thoughts on the fact that we don't have any scripting on iOS? Um, well, I mean, Apple has created a, an environment in iOS where there isn't this ability really to automate things the way you can in the Mac. Um, so, so right from the get-go, they didn't have, you know, Apple Script or an equivalent in iOS. And you can do some automation using, like, URL schemes and things like that. Some apps have, have come up with ways to do that um, so that some apps can do some talking with one another. But nothing to the extent of Apple Script in OS X. Um, I think that really Apple has never really devoted a huge amount of resources to scripting and automation in OS X. Um, and and you can see that just by looking at the different apps. So so you have different apps, uh, and this this current scripting issue with iWork is is a prime example. You have different teams of developers probably developing different apps, um, and there's not really any consistency in the scripting support, and and there never has been. So you know you have maybe the Finder, which has pretty good Apple Script support, um, and then the Contacts app or or the, the calendar app might have pretty good scripting support. And then you might have other apps like iMovie that have no scripting support. Um, and it, I think it just boils down to the fact that either, you know, Apple's developers on those teams don't know the kinds of things people would want to automate, or maybe they don't have the resources to put into developing them. Um, but it would, be, it would be great, I think, if Apple would implement some kind of standard uh, you know, criteria for implementing scripting support across their apps. I think it would it would definitely help Mac users. Um, as far as Apple Script like getting killed off, um, you know, that's a rumor that's been going around for the ages. <laughs> um, you know, even when when Apple moved to OS X, there were tons of rumors that you know Apple Script was going to be killed off. Um, and yet, it's you know here we are, what you know, fourteen years later, however long, and it's still still around and going strong. I mean, there's a lot of people that use Apple Script uh, and automation in OS X to automate things, and I don't see Apple just kind of ripping that out from under everyone. Um, things certainly could change in the future. Um, you know, I don't see Apple, and this is just my opinion. I don't see Apple ripping that out and then not having something to replace it. So I think if Apple were to ever decide that they were going to change the way automation works in OS X, that they would still provide some way to automate things. Um, uh, another thing, too, regarding Apple's kind of commitment to automation, um, Automator is another app that kind of 
it, it's still, you know, it, part of the operating system and, um, you know, it still gets updates occasionally, but it hasn't really had a whole lot of updates uh, in the last, you know, few operating system releases. So, I, again, I don't think that Apple's putting a ton of resources to it. I, I agree that, you know, iOS is really probably their their focus uh, where they're putting most of their resources. And some of the new features in OS X, you know, are are made to integrate with iOS and create this this um ecosystem of Apple devices that work together. Um, and so scripting, you know, being a Mac only feature is maybe not as high a priority. Um, or, you know, maybe that's where they don't want to put their developers uh, at the at the moment. Um, but I will say, though, you know, Apple did implement Apple Script and Automator enhancements in Mavericks too. So although there were some things that have been broken, like the iWork scripting, um, and if occasional bugs and things, uh, there are some new features as well. So, uh, you know, that shows that Apple is investing something in these technologies. And I don't see Apple Script invest, or, sorry, I don't see Apple, I don't think Apple would be investing a lot of resources in these technologies if they were planning to kill them off right away. So, um, so I think just the fact that, that we have some investment there, that says something that these, these technologies will probably be around for some time it's it's good to get a reasoned perspective on it um because i you know it's fascinating we all and we all do it you know if you are into video then you start to look at iMovie and final cut and say gee apple doesn't have enough support for those and if you're into audio then apple doesn't have enough support for garage band and some of the professional audio stuff and if you're if you're a scripter then you want all the support for Automator and an Apple script. And if you are an office worker, then boy, you definitely want better pages, better numbers, better keynote. You know, I, the list can go on and on. It's always through my lens, I'm not getting enough support. And, you know, they're not paying enough attention. And the simple fact is, a Apple has a lot on its plate all the time to maintain this stuff. And uh -huh. there's some things that just, especially, you know, when it comes time to ship, you got to ship, and you may not be able to ship as complete as you would like. And then the question is, how long will it take to get back to parity or start to advance again? And it sounds like, from what you're saying, that one step, you know, one foot is behind, one foot's maybe a little ahead of, of where we last were in uh, in the previous version of the OS. Yeah, I I would like to hope that in some soon, uh, you know, Updates in the not too distant future of iWork, especially that we'll start to see some scripting creeping back into those apps. Um, so I'm hoping that you know the removal of it is just a temporary uh, problem, <laughs> um, and it's unfortunate because it breaks people's workflows and makes them inefficient. But um, I think there's there's other things in those apps that are also making people inefficient as well. Um, and so I I hope that Apple, you know, they classify these apps as productivity apps, and so I hope that Apple will start to um, reintroduce more efficient productivity features in these apps so that people can uh, you know, save time and, and want to use the apps more. <laughs> ben, I think you may have said this at the outset, but I want to be sure that I heard it right. So at setting aside the iWork apps, uh, you're not seeing any loss of function. You're just seeing the occasional breakage that comes with, with any OS upgrade. Is that a fair statement? Um, yeah, I can't really think of any major, um, I can't really think of any major scripting, uh, downgrades that I've seen. Um, I've, most of the things I found are, are kind of bugs that probably weren't caught, um, or maybe are due to some new feature in Mavericks that's affecting, um, so for example, sandboxing, uh, I think I found a bug in address book scripting that might be affected by sandboxing, um. But I haven't really seen any major scripting problems uh, aside, like nothing to the level of the iWork stuff. Um, and and as I said, you know there are a, a bunch of new Apple Script and Automator features in OS X as well. So in Mavericks, um, Apple has now provided ways to do uh, to integrate your scripts and Automator workflows with Notification Center. Um, which is nice because you know you might want a script to alert you when it's done running or an automator workflow to alert you when it's done running. Um, so so that's you know that's one nice thing. Um, another thing too is uh, with gatekeeper, um, 
if you want to email scripts to people or workflows, um, they may have problem problems running them because they're not signed by a developer, by a, by a known Apple developer. Um, and so now Apple provides ways that you know you can actually go and if you've signed up for the developer program, you can download a developer certificate. And Automator and Apple Script Editor both have ways that allow you to sign your apps, your Apple Script apps, and your scripts with your developer ID that are built right into the apps. So they're making it a lot easier for developers to sign their, their tools um, so that they can distribute them and their users can run them a lot easier. Um, another neat thing with Automator, which I have not, not played with yet myself, but um, Automator workflows can now be saved as speakable items, which you've been able to do with Apple scripts for a while. Um, but it's it's really neat. So you can create an automator workflow, save it as a speakable item, and then uh, if you have speakable items enabled, you can just you know press a key on your keyboard and just speak the name of the workflow, and it'll start to run. Um, so there's there's and those are just a few of the things. Um, there's a, there's a number of other little things that have been kind of introduced. Um, some some are a little bit more developer savvy, you know, developer oriented, um, but. But they are, you know, implementing enhancements to the to both Automator and Apple Script. Um, not as many as I would like, but but there are some nice enhancements that I think will will make things a little bit easier for scripters going forward. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and ten percent off your first purchase. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the discount code MACVOICES11. That's MACVOICES11. Since we last talked, I heard from Kurt, who told me that he set up a portfolio site for his artwork and photography. His description of Squarespace was amazing. No, his description wasn't amazing. He said Squarespace was amazing. Kurt's lack of in-depth experience with HTML didn't deter him from setting up a beautiful site that looks like he's an old hand at coding. I'd like to invite you to take a look at his site at azkurt.com. That's A-Z-C-U-R-T dot com. His photographs of the Arizona desert are breathtaking. It would be a real shame if this work didn't get displayed, and with Squarespace, Kurt was able to get it up and running easily. He reports that the customer service was, quote, jaw-dropping, often getting replies back within an hour of submitting the question. I wish I was as good a photographer as Kurt. I bet you wish you were as good a photographer as Kurt. Wishing isn't going to help either one of us, but Squarespace can help us look as good as Kurt does when it comes to our websites. Now, if only they'd give photography lessons. No matter what you do, photography, blogging, business, commerce, design, it doesn't matter. Squarespace has you covered with a huge selection of templates that get you started and make you look good. Try before you buy with no credit card needed, but when you do decide to make the site your own, take 10% off your first purchase with the code MACVOICES11. That's MACVOICES11. If you've built a site with Squarespace, I want to hear from you. Send an email to chuck at macvoices.com with your Squarespace story, and I'll feature it here so the world can find out what a great site you've put together and how Squarespace helped you do it. Kurt says he couldn't be happier with his Squarespace site. When was the last time you said that? About anything. Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. So if someone is interested in getting started in scripting, is this a good time to do it? Or do you think maybe work on another project and let another update to the iOS or to the OS, excuse me, come out? Well, um, I mean, one of the things with, so with automator, automator is an end user tool. So for building very, if you want to do simple automation, um, it, Automator is certainly a valid thing to look at. Uh, you can you can put together some useful workflows and save them as services or you know calendar alarm workflows or other things uh, in just you know a few minutes. And so you might create something that saves you you know ten minutes a day and it takes you five minutes to build it. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but um, but I think you know Automator is still a useful app for some things. Um, 
and and it can definitely save people time and money. So I think there's you know in certain depending what your need is, um, there's there's definitely it's worth looking at Automator. Um, with Apple Script, you know the learning curve is a lot steeper. You have to you know learn scripting, um, but if you want to automate apps on your on your Mac device on your Mac MacBook Pro, your Mac Pro, whatever. I mean, that's the way to do it. Um, if you want to have apps talking to one another, you know, maybe getting information from FileMaker or something and bringing it into InDesign, um, or going back out to Acrobat or to the web or whatever. I mean, Apple Script is great for that kind of stuff. And I have tons of clients that are still using it, and I'm using it myself for tons of things too. Um, I I think that um, as far as learning new stuff, I mean, scripting. It's it's worth learning if you need to automate things between across your apps um, and scripting. In comparison to other languages, it doesn't require nearly as much time. Um, if you want to be an app developer, I think learning something like Objective C is probably um, maybe more beneficial. Um, although in Mavericks, Apple now provides ways to uh, you know talk between AppleScript and Objective-C. So, so knowing AppleScript and Objective-C is actually a really good thing um, because you can tie into a lot more stuff with your scripts. Um, so how about you? Um, what are you, because I know I've lost track of how many resources and all the different things that you're into. Are you providing any updates on how to get started or is that not a space you're playing in right now? Um, I am... I have a couple of things that I'm hoping to work on regarding um, like documentation and things like that for Automator and AppleScript. Um, it's a matter of just finding time to work on them more. Um, also have some products. Uh, I have Automator Actions that are still out in the Mac App Store. They've all been tested with Mavericks. They work fine. Um, I So I'm a scripter and a developer of Automator Actions and AppleScript, and I so far have not encountered really almost anything that I've had to update that Mavericks broke. So even my Mac App Store apps that are written for Automator and they're written in AppleScript, they work just fine in Mavericks. Um, and I didn't, I didn't run into any issues. So, so like I said, you know, there's, there's not, it's not that everything's broken in Mavericks. There's just a couple things here and there. Uh, and then there's the iWork stuff. Um, so, you know, as far as myself, I plan to, you know, continue working on, on new automator actions and things like that. I hope to have some of those out um, and some other initiatives and things like that. Uh, like I said, I have a new uh, article for Macworld coming out specifically on the iWork stuff and the Apple Strip things in, uh, in Mavericks. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm still doing tons of projects for clients automating things as well. So, so it sounds like really outside of the iWork apps – we don't have anything to, to majorly worry about, and there's no real indication that this is going to go away. And and the iWork thing, I mean, it just seems like one more item that gets piled on the heap of things that seem to be disappointing in this version of iWork. And I, I think so. I think that the iWork scripting thing is an iWork thing, not a Mavericks thing. Um, I, I don't think that, um, you know... Certainly things are changing with scripting, um, but the Mac is changing too. So things are changing to accommodate the Mac changes. And I don't, I am not seeing any indication that scripting is going away anytime soon. Um, and certainly in my opinion, I don't think it will go away until, until there's some kind of replacement that would be suitable. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that use Apple script and a lot of businesses that use it. And I don't think Apple would be, uh, interested in ripping all that out from ever, under everyone. Well, when you think about what scripting really is, I, and, and you've said it several times, it's automating. It's automating repetitive tasks, um, not a lot different than uh, some very simple examples might be text expander from Smile, something I use all the time. Now, that's a very, that's a, a very, very limited example. But if I can use three keystrokes instead of 300, why, you know, why wouldn't I? And that's exactly what you help people do with with your scripts is to make things, exchange information between programs or manipulate information automatically and save all that repetition. And that just seems like something that is hard to believe it would go away as we as we get more and more sophisticated. Yeah, I think, um, 
you know, one of the big benefits of scripting and automation in OS X is the ability to create custom processes um, because, you know, you have these apps that they're, they're great, but they, they may not do everything that you need for your specific workflow. And so the ability to create custom plugins or custom scripts or workflows to do things specific for you and make your own processes more efficient is just something that's really, really powerful. Um, and more and more people are using it. I mean, if you if you look online at people discussing productivity things for Apple, you know, Mac devices, uh, I think you'll find a lot of people who are using scripting uh, for simple things, but for complex things as well. Um, you mentioned Text Expander. Uh, you know, a lot of people use things like Text Expander and Evernote and OmniFocus and things like that. And uh, some of these other productivity plugins like Hazel and um, I don't know, a ton of different things. Well, a lot of these apps provide scripting hooks and automation hooks as well, you know, beyond what they have built in. So there's a lot of people who are plugging scripts into these other automation apps too to, um, to make even greater, you know, more efficient processes. Um, and there's really just not a there's not another way to talk between apps in OS 10. I mean, some apps have, you know, Cocoa APIs and things that you can tie into. Um, but for the most part, um, scripting is, you know, the cross application language. Um, and so the, the ability to tie into that is really powerful to, to get information from one app and bring it into another and do something with it. Um, and I, I think that's where a lot of the power is. I guess just like so many things, time will tell, and we hope Apple gets their focus back, uh, the focus that we want for Apple Script and Automator to become more important, definitely for the iWork suite, because that seems to be such an important part of moving forward. Um, and maybe they just couldn't get it all done in time for iOS 7 and Mavericks, but that seems to be the driving factor here, that they were trying to improve compatibility between the two versions. So hopefully we'll see some of those features come back. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of a lot of enhancements people would like to see, including myself in iWork. Not just the scripting stuff, but um, but definitely the scripting stuff's important. Um, I think that uh, it's important to let Apple know that people want this stuff. Um, so I think you know it, it's it's important that people are posting articles, you know, kind of calling Apple out for changing this stuff. Um, I would encourage uh, your listeners and anybody who uses scripting in these apps or encounters bugs or missing scripting support in Mavericks or any app that they, you know, let Apple know about. If they're a developer, they can go fill out a bug report. Um, if they're not a developer, there's feedback forms on Apple's website that they can go fill out. Um, and I would definitely encourage them to do that because I think the more people that let, let Apple know that this stuff is important to them, then the more... Um, maybe the, the higher priority this will become on Apple's radar. And um, I think, you know, we'll continue to see scripting enhancements and automation enhancements, um, but I think, you know, it would be nice if Apple would uh, kind of commit to to more investment in that than, than we have seen in recent years. Um, and I think that if people if people push them and, and let them know that, that this is really an important thing for the Mac, that um, that, that might help. Definitely, definitely. I got to ask you about one other thing. Why is R two D two in your office? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am a huge Star Wars collector. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I, I've collected Star Wars toys, and um, I have a huge collection of. I, st I started again when I was in college, and um, I have a lot of the vintage toys from the eighties and seventies, um, and then I've I've gotten a number of other things over the years. So that's a a re remote controlled. Well, I guess I don't know if it's remote controlled. I guess it it operates and and responds to your voice, and you can, you know, it, it'll walk around the room and stuff like that. So my kids like it too. <laughs> Is it full size? It looks it looks like it's full size. No, it's it's uh, maybe eighteen inches high. Oh, okay, something like that. okay, so, yeah. The camera fools you. Okay. <laughs> well, it's very prominently displayed. I like it. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's just um, my office is filled with Star Wars toys. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, you know, yeah, I guess I do see a stormtrooper helmet up there too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, it's good to talk to you. Thank you so much for the time and for maybe shedding a little light on this. Uh, I hope that maybe the next time you come back, things will be a lot clearer and a lot better for all of us. 
Thank you, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Uh, in case the folks want to find you when you're not here, uh, what's the what's the website? The best website for you? Uh, my my website is automatedworkflows.com, and uh, they can also find me on Twitter. It's uh, at AppleScript Guru. Great, great. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is Mac Voices. Hopefully, we shed a little light on the AppleScript controversy uh, and calm some of the fears. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Backbeat